G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of videos into DIY costuming, DIY medieval style furniture. You'll look at uh, videos around the medieval encampments and that kind of thing. We also do lots of historical analysis into battles and key events that took place in the medieval period. Who were the key figures and why did things turn out the way that they did? Today we're talking about the quarter staff, and this is going to be an introduction video and we're going to look at the quarter staff. So when we think about the quarter staff, a lot of people have a lot of very clear images in their mind about what the staff was. Most people I think would look at uh, the high middle ages and the higher middle uh, sort of medieval period when we think about things like Robin Hood and, and fighting across the river, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a, a lot of reference to this, particularly in the Renaissance period, and w actually this is where we get a lot of the clear instructions on how a, uh, a quarter staff was used, or quarter stave. However, let's go back to the start and let's look at it properly. So when we think about a quarter staff, I tend to think uh, um, a lot of people tend to try and associate these with a culture, particularly the English. Um, I don't think that any particular culture can claim ownership of a staff or a stave. At the end of the day, what we're looking here is a big stick. And let's face it, people have been whacking each other with big sticks for a long time now. So no one can really say, well, I got the big stick before you, because mm. let's face it, human history goes back, what, 40,000, 50,000 years at least? Anyway. When we think about uh, what these were made from, typically I think ash is probably one of the more likely varieties, oak as well, but I think it would really come down to whatever was available at the time uh, in, in the area and geographically available as well. Um, okay, why is it called a quarter staff or quarter stave? Well, that's an interesting question and I don't think anyone actually has a clear answer on this. A lot of people think that it could be because some people hold it at the rear quarter or rear third of, of the weapon, if you want to call it a weapon. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that because um, through history the quarter staff has actually varied in height from probably four or five feet right through to maybe as much as nine feet tall. This particular one is seven feet and I find this very useful and very suitable for my style of combat, uh, but not necessarily uh, everyone agrees and I understand that. Um, there's not a clear lot of documentation reference quarter staves, particularly in the earlier medieval period or the Dark Ages. Um, what tended to be recorded in history was, I guess, key people, important people, important events, that kind of thing. So the general population really didn't get much of a look in, in terms of recorded history and so the way that the general population, the peasantry if you like, um, how they worked and, and operated is, is actually lost in time in large sort of proportions. Okay, so what's another alternative? Well, the most likely and, and personally I think this is the most likely um, answer is that um, this is one quarter of a tree so uh, you would have essentially a, a, a small tree would be cut in half and then you'd have two side by side and then cut into a quarter um, but that's that's only a theory and there's no evidence to suggest that's correct or, or not correct alrighty so we covered what they're made from uh, we've also looked a little bit at their height and we've covered the origins in terms of uh, the use of quarter staves as a weapon, to my knowledge, there is nothing, uh, no iconography and no descriptions really that apply to particularly the Dark Ages or early medieval periods. And so we really, really, really don't know. We do know that in the Renaissance period, um, particularly and, and further into time, these actually had a huge comeback as a sport. Um, and they seem to have been used in a sort of kayak paddle type um, fashion. Um, however, again, um, if you look at some of the iconography, the hand positions change, whether it's two hands on top, two underneath, um, or, or alternate grips, and then um, your strikes could, could vary from 
um, like so. Um, but they also um, are in the there is the Boy Scout manual of uh, quarterstaff combat, which you can look up online. Interestingly enough, uh, when I guess Boy Scouts were were a lot sort of uh, more robust than they are today, and that's a shame in in, in some respects. I think they. Um, uh, be, but we are a very litigious society these days. We sort of go around suing everyone for the smallest of things and getting very offended very easily. Those are entirely different videos on entirely different topics. I find this could be a very common weapon. We, we do know that reaping hooks, for example, were, were very common, uh, particularly during the sort of the Anglo-Saxon stroke Viking era and used by both sides, so to speak, um, through that whole kind of period. And, and that makes it very interesting to me because this is really just a stick which has been you know smoothed off and ideally you want the core of the wood and you want wood that has dried out and become a lot more solid uh, this is much more this is really quite important um, so when we're talking about the making of a of a decent quarter staff I guess you could just use a branch and and shear off the um, the twigs and stuff if you if you wanted to do so if you had to for you know um, some kind of an emergency or if you thought you needed one fairly quickly but you really want something which is quite solid this particular one is is dowel um, I bought this as eight foot and trimmed it down to seven um, I find this really good I it does have a nice weight to it this particular one um, is about 40 millimeters uh, which is a pretty hefty sort of decent weight to it but at the same time um, I know if I strike my opponent I'm actually going to get a good strike in um, as I say this so I don't want if I'm using a, a a branch or something I don't really want to make a strike and then hear like a bending and hear like a sound which is more of a um, laugh then it is a decent you know crack and then thud goes my opponent a really good solid one of these uh, a really good solid quarter staff um, I do believe this can give you some good strikes and if you know where the vulnerable points are on your opponent then you can really make some effective strikes particularly with a hardened piece of wood if I strike down onto someone's someone's neck I can strike into their groin um, or the undersides of their ribs, particularly for an opponent which is not armoured, um, striking across into their rib cage, a really good strike like this. If I punch at someone's rib cage, I'm not going to immediately incapacitate my opponent, but I will um, make that fight far easier for me to win. Now, something like this has what this is about a two and a half kilo sort of weight, maybe not even. So the strikes are increased with both my environmental awareness and spatial awareness and situational awareness but the strike itself is the momentum and my ability to move and transition the pole between hands um, and move around can this be increased in efficiency as a weapon yes it can and there are stories about people who've put metal end caps on their staffs which would obviously create a much more efficient weapon. I have no knowledge of any actual evidence, archaeological, in iconography, or in terms of um, any descriptions or anything like that from the period. So, I, I, yes, that's, that's fine as a theory, but that's really all it is. Uh, the other thing, I guess, is that... Um, in terms of can this match other weapons, uh, when we're talking about things like, um, uh, in, in terms of spears, swords, axes, and, and the like, yes, I do believe it can, because um, if I transition, so in talking about holding the weapon, I do see a lot of people holding it like this, and that is, is probably more um, relevant to the Renaissance period and also, as I said before, in the sort of Boy Scouts type manual. Uh, it's also more relevant to um, a lot of the sort of, uh, I guess, the Asian type of fighting stances. But in terms of European use of a quarter stave or staff, then holding the, the staff from the rear 
which allows me to um, use the staff to target and then um, manipulate the staff in a way that will really be effective against my enemy. And in terms of things like bladed weapons such as axes or swords or um, spears and that kind of thing, we'll come back into some of that a bit later, but positioning the um, staff where so it's not perpendicular to the, the sword. So if the sword is coming in like so, and I've positioned the staff like this, then the sword is going to deflect Oh, and I'm going to have a better chance against a sword. A sword is obviously a preferable weapon to something like this. But if I don't happen to have a sword, can't afford one, or don't, don't for whatever reason, have one, then, then something like this is quite, quite effective still. In terms of like an axe, then I can, if I'm lucky, I can hook an axe. So someone's come in this way, I've then got the axe, so I can reef it from them. Um, in terms of things like spears and so on, again, it's either a deflection or if providing the, the spear is coming through here, then if I step backwards, the spear is over this way, and now I can counter strike like so. A good strike from something like this against someone's rib cage, um, in terms of their sort of shoulder bone or their clavicle, uh, upper arms, neck, head, something like that, that is going to really put someone out of the fight at best. Correction, at worst, a really good strike to someone's ribs, clavicle, neck, head, even groin uh, could be enough to incapacitate them um, in a longer term kind of way and therefore it makes them much more vulnerable to me being able to win the fight uh, with the next move. Alrighty guys, well uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video, the introduction to the quarter staff. Uh, please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.